What's up guys, today we're gonna be talking about my last year of using a Hackintosh for video production and finding out if it was really worth it or not. So the first thing I want to talk about is why I wanted to build a Hackintosh. All of the editing programs that I use are Adobe, After Effects, Premiere, Audition, Photoshop, and as Apple has grown, they have slowly switched their GPUs over to AMD GPUs, which are not as optimized for Adobe programs. I know you can use OpenCL, but compared to using an NVIDIA graphics card, it's just not quite there. So the fact that they were moving everything towards AMD GPUs was already a big flaw for me. Apple's lineup at the time also was not very powerful. They had the Trashcan Mac Pro and the 5K iMac. The trash can was using hardware from 2013, so I wasn't about to go spend five grand on something that was basically already on its way out. And the iMac, I think it was just more money than I wanted to spend, and it was also not upgradable, and there was a lot of things that I wanted to expand. I do also like to do some gaming. I play CSGO, PUBG, and a couple other just random titles. So that wasn't a huge thing for me, but being able to run Windows on its own drive with an NVIDIA card was definitely something I knew I wanted to do, but that wasn't my primary focus for wanting to do this. So now we'll get into my specs. I'm using an Intel 6800K i7 6 core, clocked at 3.4 gigahertz. My GPU is an NVIDIA 980 Ti, and the reason for that is 10 series cards weren't supported by Mac OS at the time that I built mine. 32 gigs of RAM, and then I have five SSDs in my computer, which I realize may be slightly overkill. I have one for Windows, one for Mac OS, Two for Mac OS as a backup, and we'll talk about that later and why I have that. And then I have one one terabyte SSD strictly for editing. All my footage goes on there, no OS, just project files for video editing. I think when I finished building mine, the final build was around $2,500 or so. So now we'll go ahead and talk about my experience. And the first thing that I did before I even went and bought any of the parts was loads and loads and loads of research. Uh, going into it, I had never built a PC and I knew absolutely nothing about how getting a Hackintosh up and running worked. So I was on Reddit on r slash Hackintosh. I was on Tony Mac x86. Uh, I was reading every random article on Hackintoshes that I could find. I did so much research. I think I ended up researching for about two and a half months before I finally settled on all the parts that I wanted. And I would really advise you do the research if you aren't familiar with it yet. So I had to figure out what parts people were actually using to build a Hackintosh. So there was a lot of researching of, okay, what CPU works with what motherboard? Will this GPU work with the whole thing? What RAM can I use? All of that. But the most important components are mostly the motherboard, graphics card, and CPU. The rest of everything else is really not that complicated, but you do want to double check just to make sure that all the other parts are compatible. So what I was looking for when I was researching was just trying to catch myself up on general terms. What's multi-beast, what's Clover, what's a Kext, uh, what kind of issues can you run into a Hackintosh? You know, just all these types of things and trying to get myself familiar with the terminology. So that way, when I did start building it, I wasn't stuck forever going, how do I get this thing up and running? One of the best things you can do is find a guide that has almost your identical parts to what you wanna build. Uh, I found a guide that used pretty much exactly what I used to build my computer, and he wrote a phenomenal, extensive guide. It was a long, long thread. I think there's 200 plus responses on it of people who had issues, and then he was able to help troubleshoot it. So finding a guide that has already built what the hardware you want is huge, and I would really advise you find one, because if you have a problem with it, more than likely the person building it already went through that problem and they probably addressed it in the guide so they can help you figure that out. Uh, there's a lot of different guides out there and most things are really particular to what you're building. There isn't a Hackintosh guide that will tell you how to build it with all hardware. It varies from hardware to hardware, so that's why I would really advise you to find a guide with the hardware that you want to pick. So if you aren't familiar with a Hackintosh and you're planning to build one, one little quick tip I would recommend is using Clover as your bootloader and not using Multibeast to install your tools. I'm not super knowledgeable about why people don't like Multibeast. I understand that it doesn't install your Kex the right way. It installs Clover kind of weird. And it just kind of makes the whole thing basically less knowledgeable for the user on where it's placing things. With Clover, you're basically doing everything kind of on your own and you know where everything is going. 
So if you aren't familiar with either of those, just do your research on Clover and don't use Multibeast. So now we're gonna talk about some of the issues I had when getting the Hackintosh. So when I got all the parts, I was super excited. I put the whole computer together, which was really not that hard. Building the computer is pretty easy. Uh, for someone who's never built a computer, I thought it was extremely easy to do so. But once I got it all assembled and started to install Mac OS, the install went fine, but one problem I kept having was that when I would boot up, it wouldn't use my GPU. So my graphics on screen were extremely laggy, and when I enabled it to use my GPU, the whole computer would boot to a black screen. The problem was addressed in the guide that I was following, but for some reason it wasn't working for me. And eventually someone released a text that I was able to install and the whole system just worked after that. So I really don't know why that was, if it worked for everyone else, but not me. But these are just kind of the weird things you can encounter with a Hackintosh. Another one was for a little while, I would have random reboots on my system, two to three a day at just random times. Most of the time it would happen when Premiere was under a heavy load, but that was pretty annoying. And that also ended up being my own user fault. Uh, there was a couple things I skipped in the guide that I followed because at the time I didn't understand what he was saying or how to do those things. So I just skipped them and I honestly don't remember what they were. But since then I have gone through the whole guide and followed it to a T and all the random reboots are gone now. And the last thing that I actually still do have occasionally, but not that often is after my computer idles for a really long time, let's say an hour or two hours, I'll come back and the first maybe 30 seconds to a minute of it, the computer will just be kind of laggy and just sluggish in general, and I don't know why that is. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of other people having this problem and I haven't really cared to troubleshoot it because after about 30 seconds, it just goes away and it runs as normal. So it doesn't really affect anything except for those first 30 seconds. So pretty much all of those problems have been solved and almost all of them were user error. The only one that really still persists is the computer being slow after idling for a long time. But like I said, it's only about 30 seconds, so it doesn't really bother me. Beyond that, everything on my computer is functional. I can use AirDrop, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, iMessage, iCloud, the App Store. All normal OS X functions work just fine. I have no problem. I use it just like I would any other Mac, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to use it just like a Mac, and it does. So now we're gonna talk really briefly about my backup system for this computer. So since I'm doing full-time video production, one thing I wanted with this system is 24 seven uptime. I want my computer to always be working. I don't want there to be a day when the Hackintosh side just decides to freak out. So what I've done is I have three drives for OS X and you don't need this many. This is way overkill, honestly. But like I said, I always want my system to be running. So the first drive is just my Mac OS drive and that's just what the OS runs off of. The second one is a complete clone of the first one. So if my first one for whatever reason died, it goes up in flames, doesn't want to boot, whatever. All I have to do is tell macOS to boot from the second one. It's already installed in the computer, so all I do is just boot from that. So if the first one dies, I have that. The third one is strictly just to mess with updates. Uh, one thing with Hackintoshes is that you can't necessarily update immediately. So as an example, I'm currently on Sierra, but Hi Sierra is already out. Now there are guides that have been created now on how I could update to High Sierra, but I just don't really care. One of my general rules with big software is not to update for the first three to four months. Oftentimes there's a ton of bugs with OS X when it comes out and throw that in with new Adobe updates and you just have plenty of problems. That third drive is when I do finally want to start going to update, I can do all my OS X new update testing on that hard drive and leave my other ones alone. So I can mess with the updates and make sure everything is working and then I can port that over to my main system. So realistically, you don't need three drives. You could get away with two. You could probably even get away with one and using Time Machine as a backup, but I want my system to never have downtime. As far as video editing goes, it's been fantastic. Uh, like I said, I shoot with a Canon 1DX and I shoot a lot of 4K 60 FPS footage and it handles it just fine. Once you start throwing in a lot of color correction and effects, I do have to go to like one fourth resolution. But with most machines, I would expect to do that anyways. Uh, render and export times have been just fine. So yeah, as far as editing goes, I have been completely happy with it. So overall, after a year, I've been extremely happy with the machine. In fact, I've been so happy with it that I don't plan to buy an Apple desktop anytime soon. I am just gonna keep building a Hackintosh. And I will say it's not for everyone. 
If you are not a very tech savvy person, a lot of the terminology will be confusing and probably very intimidating. But I myself, I do really like to tinker with things and I like to understand technology. So for me, this was a lot of fun and I feel like I gained a lot of knowledge and now I can build a computer that will be a lot more powerful than what Apple offers and at a significantly cheaper cost, which is obviously extremely nice. The machine has been extremely reliable and with three drives in there plus Windows, I have no fear of the computer just going whack. The only thing that could really happen is I try and update and I mess up the Mac side. I could go to Windows or I could go to one of my spare drives. I really just don't see any problems that I could have at this point. So yeah, that's been my experience using a Hackintosh for video production this last year. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'd be happy to answer them.